this, these photon or electron beam transmitters must be placed in every room of every house and must be very small. They are also probably in telephone poles and street lights, on tall buildings, and of course in satellites. In 1912, Erik Tigerstedt in Finland converts sound to an image on film and back to sound again. In 1915, Marconi offers the first wireless telephone. The sound-to-light system of Eric Tigerstedt will be improved and implemented in the USA by Lee DeForest in 1919. Probably the phone company records phone call audio, recorded phone call audio using this optical method on the plastic film used for movies. So certainly by 1919, recording of phone calls on film reels was happening, and perhaps even before then. Why this optical method of recording sound does not become popular as a format to sell audio recordings to the public is a mystery to me. Perhaps the Berliner record manufacturers did not want the public to be able to make their own sound recordings. But why did the plastic filmmakers stand down? This method of a reel of plastic film must have been far more efficient to store audio than the Berliner records or the steel reels of magnetic recording. In 1921, a wired electronic image sending system built on, uh, built by Edward Berlin is successfully used to transmit an image wirelessly in France. This may have evolved from the invention of corn and will lead to television and to beaming images directly onto brains. John Baird will do this in 1925 with his electromechanical televisor. Also, in 1921, a short D.W. Griffith movie, Dream Street, will include some sound. The poor public will not see a full-length sound motion picture until 1927 when The Jazz Singer is played publicly. In 1926, Fritz Flumer in Germany improves on the magnetic wire recording of Valdemar Polson by using an iron oxide power, powder coating on a long strip of paper to record sound magnetically. At this time, this is kept secret. This paper method is much lighter than the steel strip method. In 1927, Philo Farnsworth uses the photoelectric effect on a grid of drops of metal to record an electronic image, but it seems likely that converting light to an electronic image, which can be stored, was done long before and had been in, used secretly for some time before, at least by Korn and those after him, and Pupin had seen thought in 1910, and this probably requires some kind of electronic grid. Already by now, people were communicating by thought, using an advanced system in their brains similar to a computer desktop where video windows appear with video to share video messages with other people connected to the secret network of advanced technology hoarded by a wealthy criminal elite. This secret research and development continues even today. These devices became smaller and smaller and encoding more and more complex because of the fear of being detected. In the nearly 100 years that have passed since what a brain sees were first seen, this secret has never officially reached the public. In 1923, Eastman Kodak sells 16 millimeter film as a lower cost amateur alternative to 35 millimeter film, but mysteriously does not, uh, does not add the obvious simple invention of audio to light conversion invented by Eric Tigerstedt in 1912 at the latest. In 1927, Philo Farnsworth invents a working electronic television system, although it seems very likely that such a system of converting an image to an electronic signal and back again was invented earlier by either people at AT&T, Edison, or Columbia University. In 1928, Julius, Li Julius Lilienfeld in Germany patented the first field effect transistor, the device that would replace the vacuum tube. But it will not be until 1947 that Bell Labs, 19 years later, that Bell Labs tries to patent a similar device. In 1931, Vladimir Zorkin will improve Farnsworth design, Farnsworth design, inventing the iconoscope by using a grid of 
tiny drops of metal and the photoelectric effect to convert an image in light to an electronic signal. This is the beginning of the publicly available images and sound called television and eventually to recorded motion pictures on plastic film or tape the public can buy and watch in their homes. In 1932, the British Broadcasting Corporation first used a tape recorder for their broadcast. This uses a Marconi-style recorder to convert audio to a magnetic recording on steel razor tape 3 millimeters wide and 0.08 millimeters thick. Also, in 1932, Eastman Kodak starts to sell 8mm cameras that use 16mm film to lower the cost of 16mm cameras for public use. By 1932, 67% of all dwellings have electricity. Certainly by 1934, people at BASF in Germany were using cellulose acetate film coated with a lacquer of iron oxide for recording information using magnetism. Also, in 1934... The Associate Press was routinely transmitting wire photos. In 1937, fully 27 years after Pupin first saw Eyes and Thought, a book by André Marois, The Thought Reading Machine, is published in France and translated into English in 1938, which describes the invention of a device that can record screen four only, the audio of what people think. The invention of the Maser by Charles Towns in 1953, like Pupin at Columbia University, may improve much of this technology. These devices are probably administered by those in the telephone company and probably those in government, police, and military under a large influence of those wealthy people who pay them extra to beam certain images or audio onto uh, excluded people's brains to cause chaos and to irritate people. Lasers in people's houses and on street lamps, etc., are used by people in the government, army, and police, and the phone company to make a person itch their skin, causing a person to gesture and steer the opinions of those watching that person. Lasers also can be used to cut through people at the speed of light, since the photon is much faster than a bullet propelled by gunpowder. The power of the lasers on the street lights, satellites, and in houses is not known by me and other outsiders, but very well may be able to cut a human in two in a, a microsecond, even inside their own house, just like a CO2 laser will do to metal. Clearly, people must have secretly developed smaller and smaller masers and lasers. This technology may have created a two- or more-sided stalemate of advanced computer-controlled potential massive murders of millions of humans done by computers in microseconds. In 1956, Ampex sells the first commercially successful videotape recorder using magnetic tape. At least 50 years after images are routinely stored on plastic film by the phone company, big business and government, uh, probably using light to sound conversion of the first talkies or first you know, sound films, uh, the cost for this videotape recorder was $50,000, well beyond the average person. This device ultimately evolved into the VCR. In 1963, Philips starts to sell the first public compact audio cassette for audio storage, which uses magnetic recording on plastic tape. Only as late as 1969 does AT&T Bell Labs reveal the charge-coupled device, the CCD, for converting a light image into a digital image. In 1976, JVC releases the first VHS format video cassette, which uses magnetic tape. In 1982, the first compact discs for storing data such as audio, video, documents, etc. in digital format are sold to the public. Did the phone company and government switch to CDs and digital storage for their billions of phone calls, microphones, camera, and thought data? They probably stayed with huge reels of perhaps optical and then magnetic tape for many decades. In 1995, the DVD became available, which increases the storage of information to 5 gigabytes. Have the governments and phone company elite started to store the images of people's thoughts, their eyes, the crap they hear and think about on, D on DVDs? So much is still unknown, and we excluded have many questions about the chronology.